Hi, I'm Chancellor Holden Thorpe. Joining me today is Taylor Branch, Carolina class of 1968 and a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and historian. His most recent work is The Clinton Tapes, an account of his interviews with President Bill Clinton during his presidency. Taylor Branch's scholarship grew out of his early involvement in politics and the civil rights movement, something that he became interested in while a college student. He joined me for this interview when he came on campus to donate the background materials for the Clinton book. This donation adds to the Taylor Branch collection at the Southern Historical Collection, which includes his research materials for his other works. Taylor, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Chancellor. Nice to be here. Taylor, you were a student at Carolina in the 1960s, and you were a Moorhead scholar. You studied political science and history. Can you tell us a little bit about how your experiences at Carolina led you to the work that you did documenting uh, Dr. King's life and, and, and Bill Clinton? Well, I loved the history department at Carolina. That's where uh, I gravitated. I came as a pre-med student, believe it or not. So I started off in pre-med, wound up in history, just consumed by the politics of that era. I was here at school during, started in 64, at the height of the, the year of the Civil Rights Act of 64, and uh, left in 1968, uh, the year Dr. King was killed. So. These were formative experiences in, in my life. I had grown up in Atlanta, and I won't say that my interests started here at Carolina, um, but for my whole childhood, this, uh, this movement, this extraordinary movement was growing up around me to the point that it changed my life's interests against my will. And by the time I got to Carolina, that's what I wanted to study. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we hear those kind of stories from our students all the time. As I said earlier, you've donated all your research materials to the Southern Historical Collection. What is it about uh, what we have here with Tim West and the collection that, that makes scholars like you want to donate their materials to the university? Well, Carolina has been a pioneer ever since the time of Howard Odom back many, many decades ago. In, in the notion that you need oral histories to, uh, it used to be called folk history, but for me in race relations, uh, I go on the, on, the, on the notion that cultures put in libraries what they're comfortable with, and a lot of the civil rights movement wasn't in libraries. It had to be approached through oral histories with the participants. Mm -hmm. So I waited long enough to get a little perspective, I thought, but not so long that most of the people who were with Dr. King and th that they were still around and interviewed with, so that I could interview them. So, because I think that's indispensable. So the materials that are here in the civil rights part of my collection are thousands of interviews with the participants uh, in the civil rights movement. And, and uh, I think they belong at Carolina because Carolina pioneered oral history. Moving on from, from the Civil Rights Movement to Bill Clinton, uh, when I think about Bill Clinton, I think about someone who is just had a truly uh, extraordinary curiosity. Is the, how do you think that influenced his, his leadership? Uh, I think it frustrated him that it didn't get across, that he was obsessed with global trade arrangements and peace agreements on, on four or five continents working at once while trying to end the uh, budget deficit nobody thought was possible. And all of the news was uh, about his girlfriends and uh, corruption and um, more or less soap opera. Um, that's, that's, that's on us. That's about us. Uh, to some degree, uh, he, he readily admits failures in his presidency, but they didn't begin with a lack of interest in, in the real substance of politics. Uh, that he's obsessed with that, and I think that's one of the things that comes across in my interviews with him. It was just remarkable to be around somebody who lived and thought and breathed, uh, what can I do about this problem and that problem uh, all the time. And how did that make him different to work with than some other folks who wouldn't be as, as curious as, as he is? Well, he's the only president that I've, that I've sat with in long interviews like that, so I don't really know what other presidents uh, are, are like, but he is an intensely cerebral and curious and mercurial uh, character. Uh, and I think that at least in, in public policy, whether you agree with him or not, the striking thing about it is, is how his motivation is to try to find something that will work in, in public needs. My guess is that most of our presidents are more like that than we think, uh, that we are to some degree imprisoned in these cartoon images that animate our debate uh, so that it, it's really hard. We don't really get a fair picture of what it's like actually to be president. I think it's uh, 
so great that you've been able to document some of that so that people can can see what it's really like. And I think I think everybody in public life probably really appreciates uh, yeah, shedding some light on how hard how hard it is. I hope so. Yeah. It was a pretty bizarre thing because during that time, those eight years, we were having these secret conversations. He was petrified that people would find out about it and subpoena them and mm -hmm. wreck the whole project mm -hmm. and maybe his presidency. So we had to keep it secret. But during the day, I'm writing about the 1960s and Martin Luther King and the Vietnam War. And then once a month, all of a sudden, I shift gears to a contemporary president. So for me personally, I don't write about this in the book. Mm -hmm. But it was a pretty bizarre experience to go from a, my, where my mind was obsessed with a presidents in the 1960s and civil rights leaders mm -hmm. trying to solve racial problems. And then every now and then I'd go up to a contemporary president who's wrestling with the whole world and it would be like I was on the far end of the universe. Mm -hmm. So it was a bizarre experience to do both. I bet it was exciting too. Uh, well, you and I are both Beatles fans and you made a CD uh, with your band off the rocker called the Blue Album, which is Carolina Blue. And um, I understand your music career also got its start at Carolina. So you and I both have musical stories. How did you get uh, interested in, in, in playing rock music? We played basically to help earn spending money when I was at Carolina. We formed a band called the Zookeepers uh, in 1965. And that was right when the Beatles were big. Most of the bands around Chapel Hill at that time still played the Tams and the Temptations uh -huh, and okay. the Drifters. Mm -hmm. We were the only ones doing the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And uh, my buddies and I stayed friends uh, ever since. And when I finished the King books, 40 years later, we had a reunion and had so much fun doing it. We, we, made, uh, we made that recording. It was just a, a joke, but Off Our Rocker kind of is an apt description of, of us now. <laughs> We're, we're old, we're off our rocker, but we still love that music. Yeah, and so, so do I, and so do uh, so many other people. Um, well, Taylor, it's been a real treat to get to meet you today and to talk to you, and I, I know everybody at Carolina is so proud of what you have done and how great you've made our university look, and the fact that you uh, are letting us uh, take care of all your papers is really a privilege for us, and thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I'm grateful, and good luck to you and Carolina. Thank, Thank you. you.